Hi guys, welcome back to my video. As you guys can see from the title, today I'm gonna to be doing a video on things you should know as an expat if you want to own a dog or adopt a dog here in Germany, as well as things you can purchase which has enhanced our dog owning lifestyle, as well as some training bits which really helped us out in the beginning. So you guys should have just seen in that little <laughs> mini clip, Bo is like sitting in my lap, he walked right in on his own. He is a Maltipoo. F1B meaning that he is more poodle than he is Maltese so he is a mixed dog and he is almost four months old so he is still a puppy you know still has his puppy tendencies and still obviously learning a lot so we have a long way to go before we start this video please do follow me on Instagram and subscribe to my YouTube channel it really really helps me out and just tells me that you guys really appreciate my content so I will be leaving everything in my description box below you can also just go Go down i think it's right here and click subscribe so let's get started where can you actually adopt a dog here in germany and i'm from new york so i kind of know the process of how to do that in the states because it's kind of straightforward you go to like a shelter or you adopt a dog from there's like these places where you can actually purchase a dog like for example shake a paw i know there's those type of stores on long island but moving to germany i wasn't really sure you know if the processes are kind of the same to my surprise actually everything is more or less the same so you can adopt a dog from a shelter you just have to type in you know your city and shelter i also found out that you can actually adopt a dog from a family through social channels so for example facebook or ebay and you can actually you know get a dog this way if you're looking to get a dog try to go through those avenues there's also obviously the option of a breeder but it's just recommended to one second. He is so cute right now and obviously wants to sleep. I had to stop the video to show you guys. But yeah, just make sure you go to a reputable breeder if you are going that route. One thing to also note when you do go to adopt your dog from, for example, social channels, please make sure that you get a contract. In our case, we adopted our Malty Poo from a family and they gave us a contract and he was already chipped. So that also worked out in our favor and they were already starting to kind of train him a little bit. So it really really was a, a pleasant and easy process for us so I would really recommend that you make sure that you are dealing with reputable people and that you know you see the dog there's a, a, a contract like everything is set in stone and you feel secure getting this dog from a non-traditional channel once you do actually adopt your dog and you know you're ready to take them home or you have already taken them home you are going to need to start looking into health insurance and other insurances i think that's one of the first things that you should do i started looking maybe a few days before we decided to pick up Bo. there are two insurances which were recommended to us and which are actually important for you to have which is the liability insurance so pet liability insurance and this is in the case that your animal destroys your home destroys somebody else's home destroys the apartment property you know this is not our house our our flat so we got that insurance to cover us in that avenue and then we also got health insurance and our liability insurance is through the company get safe and i believe we paid one premium for the year i think it was around 30 to 40 euros so not too much for this liability which worked out fine and then when it comes now to pet health insurance we're basically working with their competitor this company is called luco and they both basically do the same thing i think luco can also do liability and pet health insurance and get safe can actually do both as well but i don't know i found that the prices for luco were a little bit cheaper when it came to health insurance and get safe was better when it came to liabilities i would not recommend luco i only went with them because they speak in english as well it gets safe like all of the claim processes and etc are in english which makes it a lot easier for me as a first time you know dog owner i want to be able to understand all the fine print or at least try to and get safe straightforward easy but aside from all of that negativity that bad energy from luco you do need a health insurance or you can just pay all of your vet visits out of pocket but i will tell you it's 
a little pricey. So the next thing that you have to do once you've gotten your insurances figured out, you need to register your animal's microchip to you. I was lucky in my case because Bo was already microchipped when we got him, so I didn't have to get him chipped. But if you have to get him chipped, that is gonna be done at the vet. And then once you have the chip installed and everything, you need to register that chip to you, to your address. And this is basically just so that if anything happens to your dog and he's lost or he's not with you, they can actually just read the chip and see exactly who he belongs to. We were able to just go on this website called Tasso and register the chip to us as a new owner with our address and everything. So it was all set up and it was completely free of charge. So at least with this, you don't have to pay anything. The next thing you have to do specifically in Germany is you need to register your dog to your local authorities. If you already live in Germany, you kind of understand the process. When you move any type of city within Germany, you have to register yourself and it's called an Anmeldung. It's kind of similar with your dog. If he is living now in Berlin, he is here. You need to register your dog to the local authorities to say that he is here and that he is with you. He lives at your house. So that's what we did. This process I did online and it cost 17 euros and 50 cents and I believe it is a one-time payment. So the next and the last thing that you have to do in the bureaucracy world is you need to register your dog with the local tax office because you have to pay a dog tax every single year. I was like flabbergasted because after registering him now with the local authorities like this Anne Meldung, now I have to pay tax? Like having a dog is already expensive now to pay taxes. We had to pay this dog tax and this also I did online and it cost us 120 euros per year for our little Malty Poo. And like I said, we have to pay this yearly. So be aware of those charges when you are getting a dog. There's a lot of other things to take into account. We're gonna go into the next section about, you know, the things that I purchased for Bo and some of the training bits, which really helped us. I think this is self-explanatory, but I'm just gonna slide it in the video anyways. Is potty training right away so I think we had like two days where we just did pee pads and then our vet was like you need to take him out immediately and I was a little bit worried just because he wasn't fully vaccinated yet and I didn't want him to be outside but the vet reassured me she's just like find a place where you know dogs don't frequent somewhere quiet and just start potty training him there immediately and it has saved our lives because I could say that he's about 90% potty trained it's only when he is forced to stay inside or we happen to to miss the signs or it's just been a few hours and we've made a mistake or he has diarrhea for example <laughs> that he has a mistake the next thing that we totally totally avoided with him was feeding him anything from the table and this is something that I see at restaurants that I've seen with other people's dogs that I know and it's just the dog like sitting at the table and like looking up at the table and kind of like in your space when you're trying to eat and this is something that we kind of curbed from the beginning because there is no food there's no he's not getting any type of human food unless it's like dog approved carrots for example but he's getting zero zero human food and not one crumb from our table so whenever we're eating at the table he minds his business he doesn't even look at the table and that is just because we don't feed him anything from the table the next thing that i would highly recommend is for you guys to have like treat containers all over the apartment so in my office i have like a treat bag just because if we do some like random in between training while i'm in home office just like sit stay commands i want to have the treat to reconfirm that so I always have like a little bag of treats in my office in the hallway there is a container of treats and we also we like reach back and forth when we're training or if we're heading out with him for a walk so we just have the, the treats right there. We take that with us when we go out. The next thing is investing in good quality harnesses. Since he's a small dog, we do try to use a harness. Sometimes I use the collar when we are trying to correct some behavior. So he does have you know, a problem with walking correctly on the leash and a trainer did advise that if there's some issues with that, try to use the collar instead to you know, correct that behavior and make sure that he's aware that when he's on the collar, he is not to act out or run out of the leash or attack anything. So we do interchange, but I would still highly recommend more so a harness. And if you have some issues, then you can do some research and see how just wearing a collar can support you. But we do have some harnesses. This one is actually from Amazon. It's in a size small 
and it fits him quite okay. It's actually still a little bit too big, but it still works fine. We have a, another one, I believe it's from Lovin' Dog, and I absolutely love this site. They have such high quality dog accessories. On top of having a nice harness that actually supports your dog, I would recommend obviously a leash, and most harnesses, they have a matching leash, or you can just buy a leash. Each of them actually do have a poop bag like container. We're using the earth rated garbage bags and they always send over with the garbage bags these poop containers which is very very handy and so actually on every single leash in our little dog container there is a poop bag holder on it so you can just literally grab any leash you want and go and it's been very very convenient what i would also highly 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 recommend is not just any leash but i think at least one of your leashes should be like a city leash, a no hand leash. I got this one from Prunkhund, I think it's called. It's a German brand. And basically it is a free hand, no hand leash. I just wrap this leash around my body like this and then attach this to Bo's harness. And then he just walks. I don't have to like hold the leash because it's around my body. And it's been very, very, very helpful, especially when it's freezing outside and I don't wanna have my hand on the leash. So guys, we've reached the end of the video. I hope it was a little bit helpful and I hope you guys got a bit of insights into what it means to own a dog here in Germany. I hope I also shed some light that it's also possible for you as an expat to get a dog here, own a dog. You just have to follow some bureaucracy processes and you'll be fine. So let's use this video, the comment section below as like an open forum. Any other tips that you have to share with your own experiences or anything else that you wanna share, just drop it in the comment section below. Bo and I are super happy that you guys tuned in and we hope you are staying happy, healthy and safe and we will see you in another video.